So today I'm going to be pushing the boundaries of a phone camera to see if we can take a photo of the human iris and what help we might need along the way to better achieve those results. So the first thing I'm going to experiment with is just the phone by itself. No extra lenses, no add-ons. I want to see how the phone can handle being so close to something so small. So let's see what happens. Welcome to the most professional angle I've ever had on this channel. So let's see how close we can get with just the raw lens. I'm not expecting anything decent uh, because this camera is not made for getting close and personal. Right then, so looking at the results, this image is definitely not usable. If we were to blow this up in Photoshop, all you're gonna see really is a blurry mess. So that's when we're gonna introduce these. So we've kind of proven that by itself, the phone isn't able to do anything that we'll really want. However, with just a clip-on lens, this one in particular is a 75 millimeter macro lens that clips onto the phone. We can turn our raw iPhone into a macro, well, hopefully a macro camera. So from Amazon, I've got one of these clip-on lenses, which now essentially turns my phone into a bit more of a macro camera. This particular set that came with a 75 mil and a little 25 mil lens, I got for second hand, for 60 pounds. I think brand new, this lens alone is like 120 pounds. However, you can get very, very cheap ones from the likes of Amazon for like 25 pound brand new. You don't need anything that expensive. I'm just gonna return this anyway. Now, with this add-on, let's see how much close I'm able to get to the iris. The problem is though, now we've lost our light because this lens is actually covering the flash that I'm going to need for all of my light. So I'm just gonna use a secondary phone to get the flash on and make sure that the iris is nice and lit for this image. So what you're looking at right now is a raw file taken using a Canon R6 and a 100 millimeter macro lens. Now with a bit of color and brightness tweaking, we can see that the image really comes to life and we've got some incredible detail in the image. When we skip over to the photo taken with the raw iPhone, no attachment, whatsoever we can really see that we're not working with much this is just not usable even if it was just something for Instagram we can't use this however when we put the 70 millimeter macro lens on we did end up with something like this so let's take this image and also one of my eyeball let's edit them down and see what we can really bring out of these raw files all right so i've done some color correction to the iris now first of all don't worry about everything around the eyeball because this realistically is not going in our final image we're only going to be working with the iris so if i just zoom in and do some before and afters you can really see how much detail we were able to bring out and honestly the way I did that was just by opening the sharpness down here to 100 and I also brought up the clarity by 10 and added a little bit of dehaze in there as well. Uh, I did the exact same thing to my iris here. This is the after image and this is before. So again, if we zoom in and sort of switch back and forth between the edit and the raw file, you can see that even with an iPhone camera or whether it's a Pixel or a Samson, you're still going to be able to bring out a lot of detail just by upping the sharpness of the image and bringing out some clarity too. So now we need to put these images into Photoshop so that we can really bring them to life and get that final image that you want. So to get your image from Lightroom into Photoshop, all I want you to do is right click it and click on edit in Photoshop and then click it again, edit in Photoshop. This is gonna open up Photoshop with our raw file in there, no compression loss or anything like that, which is exactly what we want. So everything I'm about to do to this iris, I'm also gonna to do to the other iris too. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is just simply unlock your layer and then come over to the elliptical marquee tool. Now here, we're gonna draw a circle as best as you possibly can. And then we're simply just gonna place that over our iris and do Control, Shift and I on your keyboard. That's gonna invert our selection. And then come up to Select and Mask. Then on the right hand side here, what I want you to do is change the smoothness to about 30 to 35. And with the feathering, you're going for about eight pixels. And then we can go ahead and click OK. Now, when you click Delete on your keyboard, you're gonna get rid of everything apart from the iris. So now you can do Control D to get rid of that selection. And what you'll notice is we haven't got a hard cut. We've got a nice smoothed out cut, which is gonna basically make this image look a bit more natural. So a couple of things to do with this iris here. We've got a few distractions going on. So we've got this bright light. 
this was coming from where we were holding the flash up to make sure we could get as much light into the iris as possible. I think to get rid of this one, all I'm going to do is come over to the patch tool on the left here and simply draw a circle around it, drag it down a little bit, and there we have it, it's all gone. So we can do control D again and that will get rid of that. Now the pupil itself, we can see quite a lot going on in the background. We've got a bit of lights going on here. There's some color differences. So all I'm really gonna do with that is grab the paintbrush tool, make sure that the hardness is on 0%. So we've got a nice soft brush and simply just color in our pupil so that we've got a perfectly pitch black pupil just like so. There we are, as simple as that. And now we have two irises that we're ready to bring onto one canvas. So to do that, it's nice and simple. Literally, all I want you to do is come over to either one of the layers and just drag them into the other layer, just like so. And just make sure that if you've got any duplicated layers that you just uh, set them together. So the only layers that you should have at the bottom is one for one iris and the other for the other iris. Now, what I wanna show you is we're gonna be doing an edit that will look like this. We're kind of going for that infinity loop with both irises. But what I would say is stick around so that you can learn how to do this. But I do have two other iris videos. Now, the first link in the YouTube description is gonna be a video where you will learn how to do this edit where two irises are colliding and sort of exploding. So once you've done this, definitely check that out. And the second link in the YouTube description is going to be two different tutorials in one video. The first tutorial is how to do the yin yang symbol with both of your irises. And then a more simpler, just two irises in space sitting together. So again, if that interests you, the links will be below in the description. But let's get into doing the infinity video right now. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is just bring in this completely random photo that I found off of Google of space, some stars in the background, just so we're not sitting on something that's completely blank. And all I wanna do with this is come up to filter and blur and hit Gaussian blur. And I think a radius of about five pixels sets it in nicely. We can still see the stars in the background, but they're nice and blurred, kind of giving us that depth of fields. And just go ahead and click OK. Now, of course, we have a bit of a discrepancy with the size going on here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lower the size of this iris. I'd rather make one of the pupils smaller than making one of the pupils larger, especially because we're working with a camera that of course uses a very small sensor. I don't wanna be getting rid of that detail. So let's kind of match these up and put it like that. Now this area of the brown iris, my iris, is the part that I'm gonna be getting rid of but you'll notice that there's way more detail in the left-hand side of my iris than there is the right. So all I'm gonna do is go Control T, I'm gonna right click it and click on flip horizontal. So now all the good details are going to stay in the image and I might even just rotate it a bit and have them up more like this. And I think that's looking pretty good, to be honest. I might move them both over just a smidge, just so they're a bit more centered like so. Another thing that I'm gonna do, I think because it's an iPhone photo, I wanna add a bit more sharpness into this. So I'm gonna click on layer one, which is just mine, and I'm gonna click filter, sharpen, and sharpen again, that's just automatically going to sharpen the image. And we can do that to the other iris, iris as well. Just come over to filter, sharpen, and sharpen again. It's just gonna give it that bump in sharpness. So before we start rubbing anything out to get that infinity logo kind of thing going on, what I want you to do is actually double click your layer. And I want you to click on outer glow. Now, when you click on outer glow, click into the layer itself and you'll notice that we've got this little square box where we can choose what color we want the outer glow to be. So if you click that little box, you then have this eyedropper tool and we can click anywhere in the iris until we feel like we've got a color that really complements the eye. So I think for this, a sort of nice bright, orange, orangey brown kind of goes nice in this. So if we were to zoom in a bit, you'll see that we've got this glow going on that matches the color of my eye. And we can do the same to the other iris as well. I'm just gonna come over, click on outer glow. And when we go into the layer itself, we can click on the little square box. And again, find a color. I think that one actually works really nicely. Uh, that will complement the eye. So I think going around somewhere like 
again something brighter like this that really makes the image pop so already there we're working with something that is looking incredibly nice so now i'm going to come over to our rubber tool and i'm simply going for the soft round brush making sure that the hardness is again set to zero and the size for me is around about 400 pixels so i'm going to click on the layer that I'm going to be basically rubbing out and I want to change the opacity down to about halfway so that I can see which part I'm going to be rubbing out. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and what I'm actually going to do is potentially make this rubber a bit bigger because essentially the larger the rubber size the more discreet it's going to be. So if I were to just do this to begin with just taking off a slight edge and then I bring the opacity back up to 100%. You can see it's very faint. So I might bring the brown iris in just a bit. There we go. Now I'm gonna go back to the rubber tool, make it just a little bit smaller so that we can refine some of the edges here. And we want this um, to kind of blend in nicely. So what you'll notice is that my rubber tool isn't actually touching the eye itself. I'm really just rubbing away the edges to make this as transparent as I possibly can. So now when we zoom out, we have this nice fade into each other. And I think this looks incredibly good for an iPhone that just has a little lens attached to this, you wouldn't potentially know that this was taken with a phone. You might be able to get away with saying, this was taken with a professional camera. So if this is for something like social media or potentially some university work, I really think you can make this work. Again though, if you're happy with this edit, make sure to check out the other videos where I give you a bit more in detailed edits that will take it to the next level. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you found it helpful, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one.